the Lord's Supper. This is a special, special service for you and me as we meet at his table. It's all about Jesus, not us. Jesus gave himself so that we might, we might be blessed through this. He's the promised one of the Old Testament. As you and I examine our lives personally and confess every known sin that we have, we will find a time of renewal and reviving that we've been talking about as a church. The Old Testament tells these things in the book of Isaiah. It tells us the whole gospel if you look close. Isaiah pens four servant psalms, suffering servant psalms. They weren't looking for a sufferer. They were looking for a savior who was like a mighty, mighty, mighty deliverer. One of those Suffering Servant Songs is in Isaiah 53. Please take your Bible. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. Surely Jesus took our infirmities, carried our sorrows, yet we considered him smitten by God, stricken by God, afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus was crushed for you and me so that we might have peace with God, no longer an enemy as we looked into it in our Sunday school, but peace with God, peace within and that we might be healed. He wanted to do a work in our soul. He wanted to do a work in our spirit. He wanted to heal our sinful condition and make us whole in God's sight. It's mentioned a second time in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. Yet it was the Lord's will it was the Lord God will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And the Lord God makes his life a guilt offering. We see Jesus crushed, crushed by God. He was that sin offering. He was that guilt offering to take away our sin if we choose to examine ourselves and examine our lives, confess our sin, and find ourselves right with God. Jesus was crushed, broken to pieces by God. He was crushed because of our sin, our sin. Not only was he crushed, but he was poured out for us. Toward the end of this psalm, Isaiah 53, verse 12. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. Listen. Jesus poured out his life for you and for me. Listen, I break open this body and I pour out the fruit of the vine, the grape juice. Jesus was poured out for you and me. His life was poured out. The Old Testament tells us life is in the blood. His life's blood was poured out for you and me. He died not only the crushed body but also the shed blood. He was poured out for you and for me for our sin. And it closes here by saying, he bore the sins of many. He died for all of us. Hopefully you and I have accepted him and believed in him, taken him as Lord and Savior. 
He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. If you listen to what Jesus said for the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. He made intercession. He prayed for you and me from the cross. He prays for us even now at the right hand of the Father, praying for us who are sinners. May we have confessed our sin. May we find ourselves renewed and forgiven and right with him. Jesus prayed at the table with his disciples. And he prayed and blessed the meal. I'm going to pray now. Lord, bless this crushed body. Bless this shed blood. Lord, bless our confession and our examination. And may we be forgiven because we trust on you to take away our sins and take away our guilt. May we be renewed and revived and restored. So be it. So be it. I hope you will partake with me. Jesus crushed body. Jesus was poured out for you and for me. His shed blood. I hope every believer can say with me in this renewed, closer relationship with God, praise the Lord, praise the Lord.